Agnes Barnarski, Chairperson? Present. Dana Syverson, Commissioner? Here. Jahan, Commissioner? Here. Good. Thank you. John Kamish, Commissioner? Here. Beth Marcus, Commissioner? Here. I'm Jill Moscow, Commissioner. All Commissioners are present. We have a quorum. Wait, you missed one. Wait, you missed oh, one. I'm sorry. Present. Present. I'm bad commission. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, let's have approval of the minutes of the board meeting of March 9th, 2023. I make the motion that we approve the minutes as so beautifully crafted by Jill Moscow. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, minutes approved. Uh, old business, volunteer work days. New no agenda item. Oh. Get approval. Okay, so we'd like to add some new agenda items. We're going to add them under new business. So one is uh, trees, tree donation from one of our volunteers and funded through MWRD. And then um, there's videos about the SLU and then uh, signage and then about herbicide. Is that okay with everybody? Yes. Okay. All right. We'll look to put that in in lieu of um, under new business item A. We'll pick out item the old item A and put it in as the new item A. Okay. 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 All right. All right. So volunteer work days have been heavily attended. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. We had our transplanting Wednesday, um, just yesterday, and there was 19 volunteers that showed up to transplant. It's 21, remember? Oh, okay. 21 volunteers that showed up to transplant. We had like four tables. It was just unbelievable. It was really great. It was very fun. Transplanted just thousands of plants. Um, all of our volunteer workdays have been greatly attended. Unfortunately, this weekend, this Sunday, it looks like it's going to be a rain out. And it's very unfortunate because we had a million things planned. We planned to put chips on the trail. Uh, we planned John was going to sell a drain. Um, we were going to put in the carpet disclosure. Uh, and put up the holding greenhouse, and it looks like all that stuff's going to have to go on hold. So I don't know. Maybe we'll we see. Should have we'll see what the weather uh, what the weather shows. You, you right. never know. Never know. You can always have a think up. The announcement is set to go out like right now, and uh, it has a disclaimer right at the very beginning. So uh, the the note is for everyone to check their emails. Uh, on Sunday morning. Yes, okay. 30, so we'll see. Maybe it'll push off a little bit. Um, so next then is Prospect Heights Public Library Park District events. Dana. Okay, nature speaks. Uh, our next speaker is Peter Perrins. Uh, he's on April 20th. He's um, right smack in the middle of uh, Earth Week. Um, there are currently 53 people signed up. Uh, for his presentation, which is pretty good because it's a midday uh, presentation because he's coming live from Scotland. Um, Grace from uh, Aviol, the B company, is um, slated to do our summer uh, speak, but we're still trying to get her to get all the information together. So I'm going to give her another week if she still has, and I'll look to do something else and move her back. Uh, bird walks May 13th and uh, 27th. Um, they're both still scheduled. Hopefully, uh, we'll have lots of birds. That's Saturdays, both Saturdays. Mm -hmm. okay, and what time? Um, they start at 7:30 in the morning and go until roughly 9:30. Mary Lou will be starting her ninth season. Wow, yes. amazing! Eighth season. I'm sorry. Eighth season. Yeah. Great. <clears throat> okay, so. Uh, Project update status, and we have the boardwalk on there. Uh, the only thing to report on the boardwalk is that um, all the signage uh, was um, the production files were finalized today with uh, Blue Raven, and um, they uh, sent them off for production, and we're looking at six to eight weeks. Um, the replacement sign for Pollinator Park um, for the one that came in with um, a technical difficulty uh, that's supposed to be delivered at um, uh, the very beginning of next week. So both of those signs are ready to go in um, over at Pollinator Park. And we have everything to install those. So at some point, um, 
That'll be on the agenda. Okay. As far as the board rock is concerned, Seth and I walked it a couple of days ago, and some of those wedges that we had put in to make it straight, and those have been washed away by the recent storm. So we were going to address that also at the work day, but it will need to be fixed. So those, those uh, just a comment on that. I, I put all those wedges in back way back when, when we put the thing in there to level it. And the idea was to come back and put bolts in underneath it so you can get rid of those wedges. Okay. So basically, now that everything's settled and those posts are in place and all that, once it dries out, you know, we'll take a work day or something and level it. And then we should really drill those bolts in to, to hold it. And then we don't have to rely on those wedges and the uneven ground underneath it. Great. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> what do you guys think about making that an Eagle Scout project? Level the boardwalk? Just, no, I don't think it's enough. It's, it's a lot of work. It's work, but it's, I don't know. It's already a, a it's maintenance work. It's not like a to know okay. project. Yeah. All right. And I would uh, suggest it be done sooner rather than later in terms of the plants now are very obviously, you know, low. Um, once the plants start getting big, it's going to be more inaccessible. Yes. All right. We'll try to build that into a, an upcoming work day. So yeah. unfortunately, it's not this Sunday. Okay. One thing I would like to point out, I know when uh, when it's definitely wet around the boardwalk, some of those sections are kind of like a catapult. Um, I flipped my dog. I could practically catch my son's dog in the air one day. But uh, has has there been much consequences from that that new flood project? I I know, um, you know, we've had some good rain events, not you know super um, massive, but have have we seen any ill effects? It's it's still not functional. They're waiting on parts. Uh, all right. So, oh, so far, so good then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the Shoreline Administration Project 2023 status. Um, I, John, I, we, we were going to meet out there and go over the uh, new location. Uh, I'm proposing that we wait until after the 24th at that presentation meeting from MWRD so we can see the plan. Uh, we'll know how we're affected in terms of where we're, we want to work. So, so I think we should just avoid those side sections. Well, the, the, the next section was the North Finger there. Okay. So, um, John, I don't know, does that make sense to you? Well, um, that is eroding quite a bit, but so is everything else. So, I mean, we can really, uh, it's almost a flip of a coin now. Um, um, there's substantial sections, um, like the the section that's that's right next, well, in between uh the the tester site and the first site in front of the big white house um it's eroding really bad and so that could certainly be a be a next a next site to okay. to attack you know just roughly off the top of your head how many linear feet it's probably at least it's at least 100 um i would guess 100 Okay. But so we could do that and then another section. <clears throat> I mean, what are we looking to attack? Maybe 150? I forgot what the 150 to 200 or? No. Um, we Last year we did like 253 or something, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was a lot. It was uh, uh, like 165. We pared it back because of the overage on the budget. We had an increase in materials. And in order to stay within budget, we reduced the linear feet. So it's like 168 feet, but in two sections. Yeah. No, last oh, year, yes, what we did last year. So um, we could do this. I, if it's 100, we could do that section, and then we can add easily extend off of one of the other sections and uh, and patch these things together. Um, OK, well, um, let's um, let me do a, a, a quick tally of all the um, parts we have in the inventory because we have a boatload of parts um, that we're not going to have to buy again. So really the bulk of the Good. cost is going to be in the uh, oh, no. the coconut rolls. And as you know, those have gone up, but we need to look at where exactly we're going to do that and decide what diameter we want those rolls to be. So let's just go like maybe just look at the side or something. Okay, I can go out there. I'll measure too, but I, I would 
I would assume for the section that I'm thinking, of, there's a pretty big drop off there. Mm -hmm. They're cutting erosion, so probably a bigger roll rather than a smaller roll. Okay. Okay. All right, we'll take a look at whatever you want. Okay. Okay. Um, we can do that tomorrow afternoon or sometime uh, this weekend if you'd like. Right. Dana, you mentioned uh, April 24th presentation. Is that at the city council meeting? Yes, I believe that's uh, when it is slated for. And it's a, okay. I, I believe MWRD is, or either MWRD or the engineers are going to be presenting. And this would be a 60% um, finalization on, of the plans. questions we'll move on to the seed greenhouse program update and so the greenhouse has been really hot it's been very difficult because it's been exceptionally warm and um, we have basically a, a shade screen up right now for the last three days they're getting watered four times a day we have fans on it's just uh, they're they're doing okay though I think the shade screen really made a big difference the greenhouse is officially full <laughs> the first one there's not a single, there's there's one, I think one or two spots left, that's it. So we really need that holding greenhouse up because of the weather, which is supposed to change, but also just for space. Mm -hmm. And I think that's all I have to say about that. We still have tons of transplanting, but we need space. Yeah, I'd say if we can't get the um, holding greenhouse up by uh, next Wednesday for the transplant Wednesday, then we, we just, uh, cancel that Wednesday night. There's just no place to put them. So. Would you like me to come by on Saturday, perhaps, and help you, Dana, to put it up? Um, sure, if you want to, we can try. It's a lot of work. I know. We've done I mean, I could before. help out on Sunday morning as well, rain or shine. I, I don't mind doing it in the rain if that's... Well, I mean, as long as it's not lightning. Yeah. Thunder. Yeah, I can uh, stop by as well and, and help out. I, I'd have to, we can compare calendars and find times. Okay. Okay, that'd be great. All right, great. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. So we'll reach out to everybody. Uh, spring prescribed burns update. Spring burns were very successful. We burned just a lot. I mean, certain areas didn't burn as well. You know, like Heron Pond didn't burn as well. And uh, for some reason, St. Al's didn't, but he was just a little bit too wet at the time so it had been a little bit after rains but otherwise the slough just burned exceptionally and there's certain areas that haven't burned before that burn um our former interns really helped a lot so they actually brush cut certain areas and then we burned them and so i think it's going to be wonderful to see after the burns great thanks for everybody that helped and i spring is Burn season is officially over. I know that Morton Arboretum is burning tomorrow in a last ditch effort, but we we haven't burned and everything's coming out. So we've, we're seeing everything, snakes and turtles and, you know, dragonflies, butterflies, insects, ants, everything. So burn season's over. Anything else about that? No. And Earth Week. Dana, do you have an update about that? Yeah, the announcement went out, everybody saw it, I'm sure. Um, the events are what they are. Um, the only one that um, uh, is really um, of significant effort on our part is um, on Sunday, the uh, SLU uh, Boardwalk Open House uh, Tours. So, is that Sunday? Um, is that the following Sunday? I'm, uh, yeah, it's on the following uh, okay. Sunday. Is it? Hold on. Sorry. Saturday, no? Uh, Saturday, I'm sorry. Yeah. Saturday. Yeah, Saturday the uh, 22nd, April 22nd. So anybody that's around can help out. Um, I don't know. I know you never know if anyone's even going to show up, but it's been heavily advertised. Um, it's been promoted. Um, it's also the start of the uh, installation work at the uh, Birds of a Feather. So... Um, the, there will definitely be people there. And the idea is just to um, answer questions. If people want to go take a walk on the boardwalk, you can tell them how we did it, what happened, all that sort of stuff. What time is that? Uh, it's from 3, um, to, I'm sorry, uh, 11 o'clock to 3 o'clock. So anytime you want to come by, is fine. 
I will be there for sure from 11 to 3. I'll be there. Okay. And then, so we'll end up seven, and then Community Day, June 3rd. Um, let's combine Community Day with um, the uh, uh, start of new business. That uh, first topic there is um, our volunteer, uh, Maya, I'm sure you all know her, um, sent me a brochure, which I'll send to you guys um, after we're done. It's a program that MWRD has started uh, to give away oak saplings uh, they're all native oaks there's like uh i don't know how many kinds and then there's one hickory plant that, or hickory tree as well and um so maya contacted them asked them for 200 uh saplings and they said sure <laughs> and um so she, her intention was that we would give those away at um, community day uh, and at the block party as well so uh, for all those people who are already subscribed um, and don't have another email to trade us for plants, I mean, that's an option. Uh, but it, the great thing is you're giving away um, saplings and uh, hopefully people will actually take them home and plant them. Um, she not only organized that whole uh, scenario, but she is going down to pick up the plants and then she's taking them to her house where she's going to care for them until the actual um, uh, two events, which would be Community Day and uh, the board, um, the block party. Uh, block party. So big shout out to, to Maya. And she was also going uh, to ask them for an additional 40 plants, um, 40 trees. Um, they, they basically told her that for this purpose, she could have whatever she wanted. So um, it's an incredible, just out of the blue opportunity that was self-driven by one of the volunteers. And, um, okay. Yay, Maya. Okay. So that's the bottom line, it's a community day. Otherwise it's um, set up just as normal. Uh, have the banners, the pop-up banners, the table, um, and we'll be giving away. Okay. Jill? Me and Do you Jill. you have a, a time? Uh, what time is community day is on the third? Jill is something. I think it's nine to to eleven or something like that, John. This morning for sure. It's not like the block party for June sure. Third, it's on June third, right? Which is yeah. It's a Saturday. It's always a Saturday. Yeah, it's always a Saturday. Because I can never make it work. So the block party, I'm sorry, community, community day, day is nine, nine o'clock on Saturday the third, and the block party is at um, starts at, officially starts at four o'clock on. Uh, uh, Saturday the 17th, 17th of June. So of June. Okay, um, that's that's the uh, spiel about Maya. Um, Patrick, um, who is also on this call uh, uh, with the city, is uh, made a video of it's a video uh, tour of the slough that we shot with Agnes and I way back when. Uh, for last, year. last year now and he has uh, put that together and uh, we're in the process of editing it it's really it's, it's really cool it's really great. really cool um, and he is looking for content so he's asking us what else can we do so we thought okay a tour of all the sites for sure um, and it's maybe something on the greenhouse program um, any of you have any ideas and want to participate absolutely love to have you do it and uh we'll set up the uh the whatever with uh, patrick and patrick thank you for doing that well maybe including some of the work days as well yeah sure um in this in this video um <clears throat> um when we were out shooting there was um, a resident that came over and started talking to us about you know, the work we're doing and all the rest of this and at the very end of the second part uh, two uh, two people were walking on the path and uh, engaged in a conversation with them, and then they went up and looked at the greenhouse. Um, so there's a there's a lot going on, and it's um, it's very altruistic and um, a very good promotional piece. So yeah, Patrick's done a good job with it. Yeah. Um, and if there's no questions about that, John, you want to talk about the uh, parking? Uh, yeah. the, the lake. 
Yeah, so um, around the lake and the pollinator park area that we've been reconstructing, there's a lot of uh, parking that's going on. Um, not only from people just like fishing and stuff like that, but um, a lot of landscapers are coming in now and they park these big trucks and trailers uh, off on the shoulder, which is really on the grass and, and, and the areas that we've been working on. And then just the other day, they put their lawn cutting equipment and everything parked right on top of everything we just planted. Um, I confronted them, asked them to if they could move it. They were very belligerent. They refused. Um, the resident who had hired the people, he went out and um, and they they did finally move their stuff. But um, pretty much, um, if you look at the area, it's it's losing its greenery. Uh, you know, as as it's along the road, and it's just becoming gravel compacted dirt where people park, and uh, especially around the uh, the stone garden um, and that section. Um, right there it's, it's that's especially bad so i think you know for these types of areas that are that we've planted already and they're in their first year and they you know they don't look they don't look like much now and so people just tramp over them but i i think we either got to rope them off like we did on the the first section um and or put some signs up there saying you know announcing that this is a restored habitat area um, you know, don't tramp on it. Um, so we, we need a solution, I think, along those lines, unless somebody else has another suggestion. Well, probably roping off and the signs, um, because it, 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 you know, one or the other by itself might not be quite as effective. But, I mean, Definitely I rope think the, somebody... the first year after we planted the first section, and I'm not talking about the test section, I'm talking the section after that. That's robust and beautiful now um you know i had that roped off for for two years <laughs> yeah um and it otherwise people were still yeah they were driving on it and they were you know just tramping through it or they, they just don't know that it's actually a planted area they think early on they think it's just a pile of weeds or just you know um just denigrated ground but um so yeah, we gotta. I think we gotta rope it off. And any area that we intend to plant, you know, like against the road, we're we were meaning to put a path through that area that goes to the stone garden out north of there. Um, it's gonna be tough to plant because it's it's just compacted dirt and stones right now from the road. So uh, you know, it's something that uh, that we have to address uh, probably sooner rather than later. Because all these all the landscapers are coming out now, and those trucks they don't they just park them anywhere they want. Let's flag it out when we look at the section of the shoreline too. Let's flag out a path. We can flag it out for now, but uh, yeah. we have um, we have a lot of um, uh, you know those temporary fence posts that we can put in, and then at least um, cordon it off with you know uh, with the tape. tape the yeah. yeah caution tape. Yeah, I I, I think we should do that. Okay. All right. Maybe it's a combination, John, of um, signs go in at where the mature plantings are, and they're cordoned off where they're still struggling to uh, take root. Yeah. Okay. okay. No, I agree. Um, on, on a similar note regarding signage and information to, to people, um, so with the wet ground, there's a lot of bike riders that go through the slough trail. And are really killing it. Um, it's it's not meant to be ridden on when it's mud, and there's just a ton of tracks there, and it, it really kills the trail. So I don't know if we need a sign for that or not, but um, maybe some kind of yeah. I think one of those little foam signs we could print and put up there and say you know, don't preserve ride. our trails. Don't ride when it's wet. I mean it's 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 really damaging. Yeah, um, it, you you remember that we've had this conversation before, and uh, we had asked the park district um, about uh, putting up those signs, and they were opposed to it because they didn't want to limit access or how the trails were going to be used. I well, would, people can know. still ride on. I mean, ride them if they're dry, but I mean, it's just you know. No, believe me, I know they're a mess. Yeah. Right. right. That was part of what was 
hopefully going to be fixed this weekend. So yeah, um, I'll I mean, follow up with her with her. Just to make sure that those signs are okay with um, with the park district. But I mean, there I don't think anything wrong with that. I mean, it's just a mm. sign saying don't ride when wet. I mean, they might do it anyway, but it's just a sign. Yeah. Okay. Um, last thing is, uh, uh, as everything is coming up, emerging out of the um, the burns, uh, it's easy to see things that need herbicides, specifically the um, reed, canary grass. reed canary grass and uh, the cattails. And so, yeah, can't touch that yet, but the thistle, the Canada thistle, Canada and the thistle. reed canary around the slope. Um, Peter, are you available to help out with herbiciding at all? Yes, anytime. Just. Let me know when and where. Okay. Okay. We'll call you. We'll call you and let you know. Call me. We'll call you and let you know. Any any time. Okay. okay. Thanks, Peter. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. There we are. That's it for those new agenda items. So, um, moving on to the summer interns. Okay. Talk? Yes. So we have two exceptional young women that I'm very excited about. And uh, both of them end early. So normally we have our interns June like 7th, 5th. Both of them, both of their colleges end earlier. And so they are able to start May 15th, which is unbelievably great because a lot of the work, it's sort of like catch up work. You know, by the time everybody starts and gets started, it's like mid June, the plants are all over the place. and we can't, you know, ever catch up with all the invasives, and this is this is just wonderful. So I'm I'm very excited. Um, do you want to say anything about them? Um, yeah, they're both just exceptional people. But again, I think everybody knows that um, um, Ari. Ari lives right around the corner. She's um, uh, grow grow up here in Prospect Heights. Um, she's been a, a slew rat forever, and rat. her parents. Um, are, are really wonderful people and they live just right around the corner so uh, surprised she's all of a sudden 21 and um and uh going into environmental sciences so i, I don't know if you you know the family they're the triplets I oh know. i know them well yeah. I, yep and their dog cooper and their dog cooper. yeah it's just so wonderful i mean i had no no idea that they were already grown and that she was so into environmental sciences and it's just really great the wonderful part is too that she's, you know, she's uh, looking to base her career basically around Prospect Heights. So she really loves Prospect Heights and wants to come back here after her education and really make a difference in the community, which is great too. And the other interns, wonderful as well. So she's from um, Purdue University. Yes, she is, and um, she's in uh, environmental engineering, uh, but is very very interested in uh, um, natural resources. Um, both of them have received their forms and uh, are in communication with Peter uh, Falcon. So um, they're doing all the processing they need to be doing. Uh, we've already given them their herbicide books. So they're st doing the studying for their manuals. Um, everything's on track with them, which leads us to, unless anyone has questions. Yes, what are their formal names, please? Record. Blank, blank. Ari right. blank. Blank. One more time. Ari blank. Ariana. Okay. Ariana blank. Okay. Brianna blank. Okay. Blank. And Catherine Fisher. 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 Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um. So if there's no other questions about that, that leads us into the um, interns from two fourteen micro internships um, we have at this point three uh, high school students who are going to be doing the micro internship uh, one of them the the uh, guy is looking to uh, do a 60 hour as opposed to a 30 hour so Agnes will work out the details of that um, she's <clears throat> uh, negotiated a uh, what Wednesday afternoon and a Friday morning, morning. Uh, for their time, and so it, it doesn't separate, separate from, from the regular interns. The interns. So that there is no, so that the educational component is completely separate and, and everything is separate because it would be too difficult to join everything together. So I'm going to go in a little bit later to work on Fridays and 
And then Wednesday afternoons I'm going to spend with the high school students, and it's going to be mostly education, a little bit of work, but they only have 30 hours. I'm going to try to condense it a little bit so it's done in a few weeks. And, you know, these are all great kids that are, really are thinking about going into environmental sciences. They love nature, and they want an opportunity to learn a little bit more about it, what's entailed, and just have this experience. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. A little bit of work, so if anybody wants to help out, <laughs> if any of those times work, then that'd be great. <laughs> but it's, I think it'll be fun. Any questions about the internship, the uh, high school? So they're from what? Prospect High School, Prospect High, Prospect High School, and from Percy. Right. Two from Prospect High School and one from Percy High School. Okay. Uh, moving on, then the um, block party. Um, you have your 3 p.m. instead of 4 p.m. Yeah, so it's thing. supposed to be 4 p.m. Maybe set up is at 3? Uh, set up can be at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, like it always is. And um, so uh, they put a limit on it, I think, 7 o'clock, but they've invited you to stay till 11 if you want. So it's up to us. You know, the routine give away the plants. Get the email signatures and now we'll be giving away oak trees. Okay. Independence Day parade. John? Yeah. Um, okay. So we plan on doing the parade again. Um, the nice part about this year is that a lot. I've kept all the construction materials for the float. Um, we'll need to contact our person who donated his trailer for that and make sure that he's on board with doing that again for us. Um, I started doing a little side brainstorming with uh, Kate um, about just changing the, changing the uh, presentation just a little bit. And we'll still have our walking giant puppets and and um all that stuff that we had last year but you know with some additional characters involved um so we're going to start working on that pretty soon and of course anyone who's interested in that uh jump on board i'll start sending emails out to all the parade participants from last year and see um who wants uh who wants in um there is you know construction involved about a week before the parade so um it came together very organically and nicely last year. I'd, I'd be hoping for the same this year. Um, additionally, I would, uh, will have, I'll, I'll reach out to, uh, probably to, well, to Arlington Heights and or, uh, Jerome McDonald and, and get us enrolled in the July 4th parade in Arlington Heights. Um, that's a gangbuster, uh, parade. Um, I encourage everybody to participate in that. It's, it's incredible. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of people at that parade and our exposure is, is, is huge. Um, um, of course, we wanna continue on our, our own parade here in Prospect Heights and keep that robust and, and going as well. So, um, and I see those dates are now out, July 1st for Prospect Heights and July 4th for Arlington Heights. So um, that's, What's going on with that? Um, any questions about that? Nope. So much fun. Such a great event. I love it. It is a really good event. It turned out very well last year. Um, we have, we're a tough act to follow because we got first place last year in Arlington Heights. So we'll see if we can do that again. Are we going to continue the tradition of, you know, throwing out candy? Sure, yeah. From our with yeah. the little signs, the PHNRC informational? Yes. Yeah, one of the suggestions I had is that we uh, gave away seed packets as well, but Agnes said it's out, out of whack, so. Yeah, in terms we don't of have seeds, and there's not gonna be seeds for a while. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. I think our informational signage may be um, on the float and that. Um, we can probably punch that up a bit, make it a little larger, um, maybe put our message or whatever messages we want to put out to the community about that. You know, it's funny, I, uh, I've been riding my bike around Arlington, Lake Arlington lately, and 
it's such a vast area of turf grass mm -hmm. and water. It's just, it's, it's really sad that there's like nothing native there, nothing. Um, it's, 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 it's a really nice canvas. Um, it would be nice if someone from Arlington Heights wanted to, uh, to start a little section over there. Arlington Heights Natural Resources Commission. <laughs> I'll talk. I'll talk to the folks I know over there. See if anybody's interested. But uh, it, it's a big project. But it, you know, just a small section would be great. There's there's so much space there. Yeah, it's a shame. Yeah, it is. But maybe our maybe our presence in their parade could could give someone a, a little uh, initiative to to do something. Inspiration. A what? Inspiration. A what? Joe Romanowski at St. L. Joe Romanowski at St. L. Oh, now I'm now I'm echoing. I'll put it in an email, so it won't echo. All right. Okay. Uh, any questions about Fourth of July? No. Thanks for doing that, John. It's great. Yeah. You bet. Appreciate you taking the lead on that. Yeah. Um, and you're up next again yeah, for the exciting. budget. <laughs> okay. So I sent the budget out earlier today thanks peter falcone for providing it um i don't know if everybody looked at it or not but hang on i'm pulling it up here um there were some march expenditures which brought us down we're we're really doing well we have 471 dollars and 13 cents left in it um this goes to the end of april I believe, and then the new budget kicks in. Uh, so, um, Dana and Agnes, do you have that money air tagged for anything? Uh, herbicide. Uh, herbicide gloves, soil. <laughs> okay, I'm, yeah, I mean, there's no easy to spend that 471, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, then we'll be starting on a new budget after that. Yeah, so I mean, because the interns are starting early, maybe we could get like supplies for them, you know gloves for them, protective equipment for them, and then, I mean, maybe, I don't, I don't know, and I guess herbicide, and then we'll maybe look to get soil in the future. Oh, by the way, going back to the interns, um, I did reach out to Joe Wade about um, could we process uh, Catherine, even though the budget hadn't been approved at that point. Um, and uh, he went back to city council, and I believe budget was approved last Monday, um, and we were given permission to go ahead and process her. So, right. thank you, city. Yeah. Okay, great. So we'll have to do that soon. Yeah. Um, it's already mid-April. Does anybody have an objection to that being used for intern supplies? Okay. All right. Moving on then. Um, is the site monitoring reports. They're, they're supposed Starting to in start May. in May. <laughs> but we've gotten a couple, which yes. was really nice. So thank you, appreciate it. I saw Peter's and I saw Ed's today. So that was very nice. So I guess, and I mentioned the slough. We need to herbicide a little bit. We burned it. That would have been out to the prairie. So starting next next month, we'll be doing. Well, we all know the prairie was burned and uh, then we put down a lot of seed. A lot of seed. A lot of seed, and the daughter went out as well. So, daughter. Daughter. Um, so in these areas where we had the heavy um, concentrations of Canada, the Canada goldenrod, uh, it'll be interesting to watch and see what happens. Very exciting. Um, I, I, as you know, I sent out my site report, and I just wanted to make a com comment off of that uh, when I presented. Um, as I've discussed with a couple of individuals in, in the uh, commission, um, you know, I, I monitor one of the remnants and uh, there's just been talk over the years amongst in the commission about wouldn't it be great if we can connect the remnants. And as you all know, you know, contiguous habitat is sort of the gold standard of what one tries to achieve. And, um, you know, I know we can't uh, if we were to connect it, we wouldn't be making, you know, perfect habitat, of course, a perfect prairie, but um, at least it could be, be an improvement of what we have now. If, it would be very difficult, for example, for wildlife, even a, a butterfly, <clears throat> to get from, uh, you know, one remnant prairie to the remnant sedge meadow, considering what's in between the two. Um, so it would just be great if we could really go after the stuff in the middle. 
um, in the middle between the remnant Sedge Meadow and the remnant prairie, and it may be even someday between uh, those and the um, Tomad Seeded Prairie. Um, you know, ultimately, it would be great to have the whole thing be one contiguous property. Um, and along those lines, I'm wondering, you know, how can we bring that about? Um, there was some question about Boy Scout project. There was another question about another ComEd grant. Um, obviously, it is ComEd property. Um, there was even some discussion about goats. You know, places use goats. I think even O'Hare Airport uses goats to clear areas. So um, I guess I'd like to talk, if not tonight, sometime about um, should we put this up to a vote? Um, should we move forward? What should be the next steps? And anybody's comments about that this evening? Oh, I think the first step is feasibility. Um, first of all, the, uh, you know, it, it, again, it, the park district has the leasehold on it. Um, the property belongs to uh, Commonwealth Edison. So it, everything has to start with those two um, stakeholders first. The A, are, are you interested in doing this? B, um, is it something that can be done? And then I think uh, once you clear that hurdle, you can start looking at it strategically and say, okay, um, next winter, brush hog everything between those two. Uh, so we minimize the soil disturbance and then spring comes and you hit herbicide everything. And then you can start. Oh, you might oh, even no. want to just cut, you know, like do the, what we did at the Remnant Prairie is spend a few work days like cutting mm -hmm. the teasel and stacking it. Because, I mean, the amount of herbicide that would, would have to go down there is just tremendous. It's, just, it's a biennial. I mean, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a method. It is a method of cutting, you know, which just you don't have to use herbicide then. It's a lot of work, but it's minimizing the, the use. Because, I mean, I can't mm -hmm. imagine how much herbicide would go down there. But, yeah, yeah I think that The you... other thing is, too, like, we still haven't, like, fully gotten the remnant prairie and the remnant sedge meadow under control either. I'd love to see that happen. Right. It was nice. As you know, this year um, they burned. Yeah. Um, and so that was fantastic. And, uh, you know, I, I, when, when I see what Cook County, Cook County Forest Preserve does with acreage far, far greater than what we have, I realize that not us, but big companies like Stantec and ComEd can go after bigger parcels of land. And my guess is to them, if they're burning the two acres at, at the remnant, burning a few more acres in between the two is probably for them, you know, small potatoes, I would guess. And going through a brush hog, you know, I've seen Cook County Forest Preserve go through a brush hog with acres and acres and acres and acres in the forest preserves. So again, we're talking about relatively speaking, a small area that if they do have this big machinery, Stantec or ComEd, I would think a brush hog in winter would be for them, relatively speaking, re you know, easier than it would be for us, for example. I think we have to uh, tread on sort of just uh, slowly and, and very cautiously, because if you remember in the very beginning, they didn't even want to do anything. They said absolutely no restoration. And we asked for permission to just for our, our volunteer group to do anything. So over the years, they've come to our aid by sending well, their crew and by burning it but that's been you know and continuously we've been told that they have a limited amount of funding so that if they're doing it for us they're not doing it for other very important endangered and threatened you know like nature preserves under the power lines and things like that so i think it's definitely worth an ask but i don't want to also you know ask for too much i guess because we're already yeah. asking for so much well, I, I've br I've personally brought this up to the commission. I would say probably three to four years ago. So in terms of going slowly, I think we're you know we're not <laughs> we're, we're achieving that. Um, well, the other the other issue is, I mean, do we have the manpower to do this right now with all the other projects on the list? Well, that's that's so, why I say I, the goal. You know, if you if you were to say, do we have the um, people to manage to try to create? a really top quality prairie the entire length. No, we don't. But I don't think, I think we should not have, if we set the goal that high, we're gonna fail. I think we should set the goal of not a perfect prairie, not a 10, not an eight, not a six. <laughs> we should set the goal of just being it somewhat more accessible for um, 
a contiguous site, meaning that, you know, right now, if you look at it, it's just filled with tall trees and, 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 and buckthorn and teasel nonstop. So there's a, there's a middle ground. There's a there's between what it is now, and a, and a wonderful prairie. I I don't think we should have what we have now, and I don't think we should expect a perfect prairie, but I do think there is some room in the middle. All right, um, we can certainly make the asks of the of the two principals, mm -hmm. and see what the temperature is. You know, we talked about we talked to them originally about the um, the idea of the uh, uh, solar. Um, um, panels over right. there. That was that was a flat out no. Yeah. But that right. was you no. Know, it was for a different reason as well. So but I would also yeah. like to see us like. I mean, we've also sort of left those areas in the backside, the Run Prairie and the Sedge Meadow, and it would be really great to to get at that. Even, I mean, honestly, first. I mean, those are those are still not good. I mean, there's teasel everywhere. There's reed canary everywhere. There's cattails everywhere. We've really let those areas go and. Rather than start on something that's so far gone and so much work, you know, going back to something that we've already started on and trying to make it better, I think makes more sense because that's where the populations of really important plants are. That's where the forest frogs are. That's where those, you know, special sort of places are. So I think, I mean, if we, we, we can do that, then, then I think it's definitely worth an ask to keep going. I think now might be a good time to do this as well. Now I, I'm still thinking about the manpower, but it seems like every every volunteer day we have like 30 people out more than before. I mean, when we were going to the Sedge Meadow before, you know, there were seven of us. Mm -hmm. um, so if we have the people now, you know, it's a good time to capitalize on that. And, um, you know, maybe we could feasibly do it. Um, you know, I just worry that we don't steal away from the other projects that we got going now and stuff. And I mean, I'd love to see it all connected and beautiful and all that and stuff. I think it's be a great idea. But you know, once it's cleared or you know, burn it, you know, then we got to get stuff down. You know, you know how it goes. It all turns weedy and all that if you don't really stay on top of it. It's a lot of work. Yeah, and this year is. Um... Uh, because we don't have any large projects outside of the um, shoreline restoration, uh, this year is focused on uh, going back to the existing areas and making sure that those things are in top top shape. So um, it's a year of maintenance for sure. But we should. Yeah, I'll definitely I'll reach out to them and uh, make the ask though for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Okay. Great, then moving on to city civic meetings and PG&RC representation. Jill? Okay, I hope I'm not uh, doubling up. Uh, at the March 13th city council meeting, budget presentations were made, PHNRC was present. At the March 27th city council meeting, uh, Public Works highlighted the Willow Road 60% design project. They uh, showed some information. They do plan to start the project this year and raising both Willow Road and Owen Court. Okay. Great. Then moving on to announcements to the public. Seth? Seth, <laughs> take it away. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I gave a heads up to some people. I wanna make a little bit longer presentation today on the topic of recycling. Um, and I, I would ask um, the publisher of our newsletter, maybe you might wanna do this, maybe we can do this as an article or something. But um, I see one of our roles as a Natural Resources Commission to let our um, public know about recycling opportunities in the area. So I just wanna take a few moments and go through some things with y'all. And if anyone's listening at home, you might wanna take out a pen and paper, but hopefully we can actually maybe write this down in a newsletter. So um, first of all, I just wanna remind everyone, as you all know, we have curbside recycling. It includes you know, aluminum, paper, glass, and things like that. The one thing I wanna mention about that is that you can't put in plastic bags. If you do, it sort of ruins the whole thing. So do please, um, you know, we encourage you to recycle at your curbside recycling with paper, glass, and aluminum, but please no, um, and some plastics, but no plastic bags. Um, secondly, I wanna point out, we have a wonderful resource in the community called Swank, which is the solid waste um, of Cook County, uh, solid waste agency of Cook County. They have a website, Swank, and they, um, 
what, what I want to go through besides your curbside recycling, there's lots and lots and lots of other things that can be recycled. So that's what I want to sort of talk to you about tonight. So for example, at Swank, they can recycle antifreeze, drain cleaners, gasoline, herbicides, insecticides, lawn chemicals, mercury, oil-based paint, paint thinners, pesticides, solvents, motor oil, et cetera. That's just a partial list. But the point is, is there's lots of these things uh, that you might not know what to do with that you have at home that are pretty toxic and Swank can recycle them. Either they have special days that you can do it or sometimes you can bring it to their site. So that's one site you might wanna look up. Another thing is I wanna call your attention to the thrift stores in our area. You know, we have Goodwill and we have Wings and Goodwill, for example, and others, other uh, thrift stores, they take used clothing, used um, household items, Wings takes used clothing and the like. So do be aware of many thrift stores in our area that take um, in good shape used clothes. Um, if I can just add something, Goodwill will also take electronics and recycle them. Yeah, I'm gonna to get to electronics, but while you mentioned, I'll bring it up now. Both Apt, you know, the electronics store, and Best Buy, they take um, electronics. For the most part, Best Buy, it's small electronics they take for free. Larger electronics they charge. I think App will even take big electronics for free, um, but you can look into that. Um, there's another organization, you know, on Rand Road, you have a lot of those thrift stores. There's also the company called Restore, which is part of Habitat for Humanity. They take all sorts of building materials. They'll take kitchen cabinets, plumbing materials, um, uh, sinks, um, flooring, all sorts of stuff. I mean, yet you should check again on their website or call them in terms of what they take. Some they can take used, some it has to be new, but all sorts of building materials will uh, they'll take and furniture at uh, Restore. You know, they build houses and the like, so they take things to make a house habitable. Um, and then let me tell you about some individual things that some specialty things that you might wonder, what do we do with this thing? So for example, clothes that are in good shape, as I mentioned, you can take to the thrift stores. But what about clothes that are all ripped up or damaged or no good you can't wear? Well, for example, H&M, the clothing store, they'll take any kind of textiles, any kind of clothing or ripped up sheets or towels, whatever. They, re they use the, the uh, fabric material, they'll recycle that. Same thing goes for DSW for shoes. You know, if you have good shoes that you can wear, you can bring them, let's say, to a thrift, thrift store, store. But if the shoes are real beat up or the sneakers are real beat up, DSW will take them um, and recycle them. Um, keep in mind that throughout our neighborhoods, as you probably all know, there's the metal scrap guy. So one of the things you can do is um, put out metal scrap and they, um, you know, there's somebody will come by in a truck and pick up the metal scrap. Um, Jewel and Tony's and other supermarkets in our area do take plastic bags. So before I was mentioning, don't put plastic bags in, uh, in your curbside recycle, but you can bring them to most local supermarkets to recycle them. And then I'll just mention two other um, online things you can Google. One's called TerraCycle and the other's called Scarce. And both of them are organizations that recycle all sorts of stuff. So I just wanna let you know, there's ton, pretty much, you know, there's so many things you can recycle. Your garbage, your waste garbage should be really, really, really tiny, tiny especially if you do composting. So um, just be aware, hopefully we can, you know, put this out for everyone to read. Does anyone wanna add anything to my list? I'd like to add a comment. Um, so every day I, 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 I walk my dog and We'll walk around the slough area, the lake. We'll walk around Heron Pond. We'll go uh, to the lake and house area. Um, and every day I basically pick up a plastic bag that's just polluted. And I pick up everything from there on the walk. Okay, we fill a bag full of plastic every day. And there's just so much out there, It's it's really, um, sick. So I just encourage everybody not to use plastic bags if you don't have to. You know, you go to Walgreens, you buy a stick of gum, they put it in a, in a plastic bag and, you know, you don't need that. Um, if you could use um, uh, reusable bags, that's the best way to go. Um, if you have to use a plastic bag, reuse it or turn it back in or something like that. And these plastic bottles that everything comes in, it's hard to avoid, but man, there are a ton of that. 
the shoreline, everything is just polluted with these plastic bottles. It's sick. Um, so um, my suggestion on that is if you really need uh, water like that, you buy a Brita filter for $20, $25. It's a pitcher and it comes out of your sink and it tastes just fine. Um, and then you're not buying cases of plastic bottles. Um, so you gotta, we got to reduce our, our usage of that. Thank you. And then if I can just add to uh, for um, the metals, there are scrap dealers in there. Actually, one on um, uh, by by a remnant prairie off of um, just north of Camp McDonald, uh, just on the other side of of the creek, and uh, you can get money for it yourself. So if you have any heavy things and you know put them on the curb for somebody to pick up is is not a bad idea. But there's other ways to cash in on it as well. Good stuff, guys. Yeah, really Love great. It. Thank you. Thank you very much for preparing all that and for mentioning all that. Great mess. Great. Yeah, Seth, let's definitely do an article, though. Great. Put it in April Journal. Yes. Great. All okay. right. Wonderful. Thank so you. We have no visitors today, so no comments. So um, let us adjourn the meeting. Can I make the motion we adjourn? A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you.